Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer and thank you for joining me for another question about heaven. Okay, so this one comes from a lady and she says, if a loved one comes through using signs and symbols, what do you suggest we do to begin a same sort of communication with them? Is there a possibility to actually know their thoughts that are being transmitted to us? How do we know it's just not imagination? Okay, so the first thing, I do have a video on my channel regarding what is the difference between a ghost and a spirit. In a nutshell, spirits are the ones who go to heaven. They will pass through their life review and then they enter heaven where they are full of now loving energy, right? Ghosts, on the other hand, are those who stay earthbound. They do not heal their psychological issues as to why they died, okay? Usually, we've got two types of ghosts, those who know they've died and those that don't know they've died. So I've got a book out there. It's called Ghosts, The Psychology of Why They Stay. And I've also got my Five Years in Heaven book, which is in a hard copy. Okay, but I say to people, buy the PDF and go and print it yourself because that saves their printing fees and their postage fees. So if you want it cheaper, buy the PDF, okay? So here I am in my life review when I had to heal all my actions, okay? And my intentions when I was alive as Linda. So if a loved one comes through, we must remember here, one, it could be a spirit who has returned to heaven, yes? And it could be a ghost that's still living in our house, okay? How many people inherit their parents' houses where their dad or mum just died in the house? Okay, they move in and start seeing all this stuff happening. Is it their mother or father? Is it something else? So unless we communicate with them and find out who or what it is, it's never a good idea to assume it's just who you think it is, okay? So if a loved one comes through using signs and symbols, so what are some of the signs first? Signs could be temperature fluctuations. It gets colder or hotter. Now that works for both ghosts and spirits, by the way. Things could move around inside your house. That is generally just ghosts who do that, not spirits, because spirits are now in energetic form. They pop in so they can't move things, okay? But they can manifest things like flowers, feathers. They can manifest things like an owl. If you, if, you know, you, you're thinking about your mum and she used to collect owls, so your mum will bring an owl in your path to let you know that she is still with you. That is a sign, okay? Symbols can be also signs, okay? We're not just talking like hieroglyphs, symbols, okay? But signs and symbols, it can be vast and unique to every single being out there, okay? So it is best importantly to look at the person who you think it may be and then ascertain if this would be something that you get from them specifically. So then you can get a confirmation that this is actually them without talking to them and saying, is that you, Dad? And then he's coming back saying, yes, darling, it's me. Okay, because that's how I get my information. I talk with ghosts and spirits every day. But not all of us are that lucky, right? Or should I say unfortunate? Because sometimes it is not a gift. It can be a hindrance, okay? So, what do you suggest we do to begin some sort of communication with them? I always say be polite, be courteous, and most of all, be respectful. So whenever I go to a place where I think, okay, there's some ghosts here, I want to talk to them, how do you introduce yourself to a living person? You know, if you go to a new group of people this weekend, say a party, right, do you just walk in and say, tell me if you're here? Is that rude? That's rude. 
Yes? So you walk in and you say, hi, my name's Linda, who are you? You'd walk in and say, oh, hello, how long have you been here for? You want to show an interest in that other person, correct? So you'd like to get information about who it is and what it is that could be there, okay? Okay, so you want confirmations that it could be somebody who you knew, okay? So what do we do to begin? Always be respectful, kind, and even generous with your time and effort, okay? Because sometimes we go to a a haunted location and it could take three hours for them to decide to come through and give us something. So patience is a big one, okay? I've been on overnight ghost investigations myself in the past and it's at four o'clock in the morning when stuff starts happening and you think, why now? I've been here all night, you know? Patience, Linda, patience, okay? So... So what do you suggest we do to begin some sort of communication with them? I always introduce myself first. Hi, so let's just say I'm here in my office today and I want to talk to the ghost who's just been knocking on my door because that does happen a lot in my house and that's why I just said it. Yes, I will be sitting here. Now I can see at the window here, so you can see here on the wall, you can see the um, reflection of the light coming through a window. Right next to this window here, there's a door. My front door's there on the other side of this this wall that I'm where my computer is. So I will be sitting here and I'll hear knocks on the door. I look out the window and I can see 20 foot of yard going down to the gutter. I can see my side fence and the other side fence. I can see the whole street. So I'm there within like three seconds. I'll hear the knock. Huh, who's there? Nobody. And also, I've got all stones around my front door. You'd hear them crunch, crunch, crunch if there was actually someone walking there. So I hear that quite a lot here. So when they knock, what does that mean? Think about a normal person that's living, normal, I shouldn't say that, a living person who comes to your house. They knock. What does that generally mean? It means, may I come in? May I ask you something? I want to interact with you some way or form, right? I wish to visit with you today and ask you how you are, what you're doing, can you help me with this scenario, whatever else people say when they go to someone else's house, right? So ghosts and spirits are no different. They usually don't just knock knock, and then just go away. They want to come in and so do entities, okay? So we've got to be careful here because as soon as we say you're invited, now see how I'm putting my hand up because I'm putting out that intention. No, you're not, okay? Let me just blow my nose. Sorry, guys. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'll just go there. Right now it's 10.52 a.m. and it is 15 Celsius in my house. It is freezing here. My nose, I don't know if you can see it, but my nose is actually quite red. It's still freezing. I woke up today at 4 Celsius. Okay, we're in Brisbane. It should be like 100 Fahrenheit by now. Oh, my God. All right, so let's get back, back on point. When they knock at our door, it is to gain entry to intermingle with us like any other living person does. So it is up to us, because we can't see who is knocking, it's up to us to put up our boundaries and our rules of what they can and can't do when they come into our house. So this is how I say it. So here's a little bit of development for you guys, okay? I say it like this. Whenever I hear the knock, or or whatever they do on my front door, because it's not always the same, I go to the front door and I open the the wooden door, but not the screen door. And I say it out loud. My name is Linda. I am the lawful owner of this house. Now, pause, because I just said lawful owner. I'm actually a tenant here because I rent, but because I've got a lease and I pay the rent, I am therefore the legal occupier or owner of this property, okay? So I put it out there. I am the legal owner, occupier, of this property. I am Linda. 
I do not allow access to anyone, being, entity, living or dead, or other, unless you identify yourself. You have no right, no permission to enter into my yard or my dwelling without my prior consent. If you are respectful, if you are kind and loving from the universal white energies, you may enter, but you are not invited. You may enter to talk to me. However, it is my discretion when I ask you to leave and then you will. See how we put out our boundaries, our rules? Okay, our rules. Now, the thing with the word invited, if we say, oh yeah, man, you're invited in, that means you can come in and never leave. What if this is uh, something other than a human pretending to be a human to gain our trust to get entry to our house? You get into some serious, serious trouble, okay? I don't say the D word. It sounds like Matt Damon, okay? So you never, ever, ever use the word invited. You always say you may enter, but you must leave when I tell you to, okay? All right, so that's also something else that we can do when we're beginning to do this. The other thing when we're beginning to do this is to call them in. You know, ghosts always are around. Okay, if you've got spidey senses like me, you just go, oh my God, there's someone here today. Okay, when spirits come in, it's generally a pop. You know, you look at John Edward and other um, famous psychic mediums, they all say spirits pop in. So it's just a pop of energy. So you may hear something like a phrase or a sentence or they'll show you a visual of something, but it's only very quick and short and then it goes again. It's like turning on a TV screen and then it turns off. So you better be listening for that five seconds, okay? Or it may be only two seconds that you're getting information from. So spirits pop in. So as soon as we put out our little communication device of our intellect and our talking, which is talking, as soon as we start talking, they pick up on that energetic connection which is our communication, which is our emotional attachment, okay? I was very close to my grandmother. So whenever I want to talk to her, I close my eyes and I think of what she looked like. I think about where she lived, the clothes and jewellery she used to wear. I think about her voice. Can I still hear her voice? I think about her because as soon as I'm thinking, I am creating that connection like a phone line that goes to wherever she is out there in the ether and she did, 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 picks it up so she can come back and find me and talk to me as well, okay? So this is how we do it. All right, some more development for you guys. If you do want to talk to a deceased loved one, relative, friend or whoever, Elvis Presley, oh, I'm connected to him because... I had a record of his and my mum went and saw him in concert or you may say something like that, okay? So whoever it is that you want to talk with, okay, all you've got to do is start thinking about them. Close your eyes and visualise them. Think about who they were. Think about their smells. Think about what they, some idiosyncrasies they used to do, okay? Think about them and then all you've got to do is say, like me, I'm going to do it right now so you learn how to say this for yourself, okay? Nan, it's Linda, because now I've just been visualising her for the last couple of minutes, right? Nan, it's Linda. Are you here, darling girl? If you do want to come through to me today, please come through and give me a sign. I would love it if you could knock something today. Please let me know that you're here. If you can pop in today and give me a knock, that'd be lovely so I know that you're here. Okay? You say something like that, you tell them what you want. Can you please make a knock, Nan? Come through and let me know that you're here. It may be, please show me a feather. I would like to find a white feather. 
So as you go out that day, you might look down and you'll see a white feather right at your feet. You go, wow, there's my sign. There's my message. Okay, there's my symbol. Okay. All right, so we start talking with them. I miss you so much, Nan. Can you please just let me know that you're safe and well wherever you are? Okay. Then the next part of this email is there a possibility to actually know their thoughts? Uh uh. Um. Oh, did you hear that? There was just a little e noise. You know when you when your phone's on silent and it goes e instead of like ding. It was like right here, but my phone's not here. My phone's not here. I haven't got my phone in here today. So I just heard that. It was over me talking. It was when I spoke. So I'm just going to look at the time. So it was about 15.40, 15 minutes and 40 seconds. So I'm going to type like that down and I'm going to look at it later and just see if there was a noise there that came through my audio. Okay, because I've asked my nan to come through, right? My grandmother. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, I have heard people's voices. It was extremely weird and terrifying I was up at my local shopping mall and as I was walking past people I could hear their thoughts I could hear the tone of their voice the accent of the way they talked okay I could hear their thoughts I thought I was going insane it only lasted for 15 minutes okay um but then something else happened after that which I really don't like talking about because I saw something which I don't really like talking about okay but um, when I was in this like brain wave <laughs> of this energy I could hear people's thoughts one man walked past me and he said I've got to go to Kmart fuck I've got to go to Kmart I just oops I've got to go to Kmart next lady get milk get milk get milk I've got to get the milk I've got to get the milk and then somebody, a kid went past, yeah, I'm out with daddy today. So I could hear what was going on inside their heads. And it was all their little voices, right? So, wow. So is it possible to actually know their thoughts? But when we've got ghosts and spirits, generally they aren't psychic, okay? I'm going to go there. They're not psychic. Well, maybe if like the likes of Sylvia Brown, if she came back as a spirit or a ghost then you know she was a psychic hello let's go that um edgar casey imagine if he's walking around now with all what he knew love to have a little chat with him on a friday night when the nights are turned off okay oh my gosh yeah it's fun with me on a friday night when the lights get turned off <laughs> yeah okay back on point generally no they don't read our vo our thoughts generally no we can't read theirs so this is where we have to trust the signs trust the messages trust what they say if you hear it okay or record it okay um, like an EVP electronic voice phenomenon so you've got to trust that who is being there is actually telling the truth right um, what are being transmitted to us so how many times a day do people say hey how you going and the person says I'm fine Ugh, fine how many times do we say we're fine when we're not a lot let's go there same with ghosts and spirits oh yes darling I'm fine and then there might be in a hellish experience ah going through the roller coasters ah I'm fine I'm fine <laughs> okay so maybe they're not. So we've got to trust what they say, okay? How do we know it's not just our imagination? Well, everything in the paranormal world could be put down as imagination, right? In my ghost book, The Ghosts, The Psychology of Why They Stay, I actually talk about cemeteries and why could they possibly be so haunted as a theory? Why are they so haunted? And I actually put it out there saying that, you know, the embalming fluids like formaldehyde, um, etc., that they use for embalming, they're actually hallucinogenic drugs, right? So if you're around that sort of chemical, yeah, you do 
get do 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 do's like the mushroom effects happening okay then we've also got to look at burial plots now mold hello <laughs> mold mushrooms other fungies or grow which can give us hallucinogenic effects okay so we're already heightened because we're oh, we're going to a cemetery it's going to be haunted i want to see a ghost oh yeah it's going to happen for me today so we're already in that heightened emotive state where we're saying oh yeah this is going to happen today so our brain makes it happen okay we want it to happen so we create it ourselves did you hear that knock i just heard a knock oh did you hear a knock there was a knock there's somebody here right so they don't even want to try and debunk it that it could be just the wind blowing something against something else that made a knock okay because they're so set on the fact that it is paranormal without trying to debunk it okay so when we are debunking our evidence like our signs and our symbols and messages that we get etc I always say it's good to look for confirmations. Look for things that we can prove that it wasn't just a cobweb on our ring camera outside our house at night time. Look for other evidence that supports that it really was an intelligent life form. Okay? Because even knowing they're dead, ghosts and spirits are still life forms okay so to this person i'll just say vl if you know who i'm talking about i hope this has answered your questions today it had a little bit of development in there so if you do want to throw some gift dollars over my way there is a link below there's also a link below where you can go and buy my books if you want the pdf or the hard copy of my heaven book i've got the ghost and the heaven book out now the links are below if you want to email me personally my email is also below if you've got questions that you want to appear on future questions about heaven segments please email me with your questions so i can do a video about it okay Alrighty. so i hope that's helped us all today to give you some light about what happens when our loved ones come through let me know what you think below comment away love you all and i'll talk to you all soon bye To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.